Hi everybody, it's Pola from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I've been working with quite a variety of scraps recently which were quite rich. So, you know, when you're putting stra uh, strings together, the, the pattern coming out are quite rich. So, I went through my uh, fabric box and I found this yellow, plain yellow and plain uh, red uh, cotton sheets. Uh, pieces and I thought how about I kind of try to figure out something I can make out of those ones and um, my scraps very often landing on the adding tape I've got a video about how to make those and I will link it in the description below and I thought you know if I just make those as a block that would be quite plain how about we throw some of those uh, to the mix I've got a lot of those uh, uh, rolls so whatever amount of blocks I can make I've got enough of those so we can start with those when you, there's a pattern called uh, coins uh, where you're putting small strips together and then you you kind of putting it into a block and so I'm calling this pattern a floating coins for after project comments and suggestions stay till the end of this video so for starters I want to cut my uh, fabric into um, big squares. I'm going with 12 inch but you obviously will work with whatever your own scraps are. Now if I've got something narrower this is not 12 then I will just possibly stitch two pieces together to cut 12 inch. I will just use up all my fabric that way because I don't have a lot and I would like to do as many blocks as I can. So first I will cut 12 inches from what I can and then I will start piecing together other rem remnants of the fabrics and I will have as many 12 inch squares as possible. I will go with 12, 12 inch because I've got 12 and a half inch ruler. Obviously you may not have that big ruler just go with the uh, you know squares you can manage easily with your own uh, set of rulers. J that's just my advice. I normally work up to what I can cut easily off or, or uh, square up easily with the rulers I've got. So I've got some pieces here obviously you can fold your fabric if you have got bigger piece uh, to kind of cut the, the squares you want you know you cut the strip first and then you chunk it out into squares but I'm never good with that because I cannot get rid of that bow in the middle so I'm just going to uh, you know I've got piece folded into half it's big enough to cut 12 inch square and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave myself a little bit around here to square it up on the other side. I, I don't want to complicate my life too much <laughs> with the cutting. Also with that first step, even if those squares are not um, perfect, it doesn't matter because we will be squaring up those blocks at the end anyway. So if it's a little bit wonky on the outside, uh, we will get rid of it later, so don't stress about it either. Okay, so that's two. Got still a batch of yellow. I still got a batch of uh, that one. I can, like I said, I will put those uh, narrower strips. I will sew them in the middle together and then I will square it up again to a 12 inch uh, block. So I will make as many as I can from the batch of the fabric I've got here. I finished. Uh, piecing and cutting my squares you can see some of them got uh, seams inside some don't so I've got a few those pieced I, I really wanted to use uh, all of that fabric they want to leave any if I could and then obviously there's a few uh, with uh, no seams at all so the next step uh, for this process will be to cut them on the diagonal just one cut uh, whether you you know you do all your reds first and yellow second or whatever color you use it doesn't matter uh, you can stack as many as you feel comfortable with uh, this cut is diagonal but it doesn't have to be you know like neat precise <laughs> because again like mentioned before we will be uh, squaring up all of those blocks so you don't have to worry about it at this point of time that's that's just Okay, I'll put five and see how it goes. I didn't even count how many I've made, but quite a few, which is nice. Okay, and just straight cut on diagonal. And that's done. And what I want to do is put my strips in the middle. So those strips are still in the raw state, what I call it. So I have not trimmed them on the side, which I will do now. 
Uh, you can use scissors just align it and go here or you can use the ruler to align it and use the rotary cutter however you want to do it it's fine uh, I will cut that and then I will uh, make sure that I've got my strip a little bit longer obviously than that edge of the triangle because we will be cutting it later to make actual square, square from it as well so I just want to make sure that I will have enough at the top and at the bottom to do that. So let me sort out my strips first and we'll get to the sewing it on. My tape is now ready to go. I've uh, trimmed all the sides and um, the length I need, well I don't know yet. So basically what I will do, I will stitch it on and I'm just going to try to gauge how much I need to stick out and if it works I will just cut all of the other pieces the same uh, length so I think I'm about here lengthwise I should be alright I'm not doing any measurement here uh, you know more or less it needs to be stitched in the middle again it's very uh, beginners friendly uh, um, pattern so just more or less two triangles needs to be sewn on the side and as you can notice I have left the paper because I will remove the paper after I've stitched it so all of those seams here do not start you know stretching and also keep in mind that this is bias as well so it will stretch a little bit so don't pull it put the tape at the bottom when you're sewing and this uh, on top if you want a little bit more measurement you can just finger press where is the middle here do the same thing on the other side and put the tape you know into half as well you will have a kind of a gauge where that middle is to put it all together so now let's stitch it and we see how it looks so let me just quickly check what the length of this is uh, 22 inches if it works I can cut all the other pieces the same length and then I will have them all ready for all of the blocks and you can chain piece that way uh, you don't have to kind of worry about uh, stitching one at a time so here's my middle here here's my middle here you can use some pins because it's quite big uh, piece so you can use pins to hold it into place for you as well just whatever works whatever tools you've got there to help you out I've got some clips here so I can put the one clip here one clip here stitch it and then I will go and do the same thing on the other side adding my uh, triangles to my uh, strips and I've removed the paper as well now you can see bits and bobs left here but uh, I'm not worried about it that will kind of melt in the washing and also what I did I starched it so the more seams I work with I always like to uh, spray starch the fabric when I'm kind of getting ready to uh, squaring up and things like that because it just keeps everything in check ready for the uh, quilting so this is the red one so how I want to lay them out I've got my red at the bottom and on diagonal I'm putting the you know on the other side I'm putting uh, yellow with the strip going other direction now you obviously can do other way around which I will do as well uh, in the second batch of the blocks but I'm starting with the yellow ones so that's going on top I'm trying more or less to line them up here but it's it's not like it's not perfect it doesn't have to be just more or less line them up so they are in the same place and now I'm going to take my rotary cutter and do some cuts I will be going with a gentle curve here and gentle curve here quite close to the edge but obviously big enough that when I stitch it with the quarter inch I still got yellow uh, left so so what I want to achieve is like a nice um, kind of frame for that uh, strip inside there we go nice gentle curves they are not the same they don't have to be uh, it's just gentle 
why it's important it's because how I'm stitching it I don't have to start from the middle to go both ways I can go just from the one direction it somehow works I don't know how it's quilting magic let's leave it that <laughs> so now I swap them around and I will be stitching them like I said from the both sides and then I will stitch the yellow one to the red one I'm going to be going slowly on my curves and also it's good to narrow down the stitch length, it's just because it will allow you to do those movements. So my stitch length is set up to two. So when you start stitching, you, you may like to, uh, you know, if it was a, a triangle or something like this when you're stitching, you want to uh, overlap those two pieces that where they're sticking out is where the quarter inch, uh, quarter inch is, kind of they're meeting this point because that's where you start sewing. So when you open it up, those two edges will kind of line up but because anything with curves will eat your fabric unless you use proper rulers which curves your fabric properly and take uh, you know take that under consideration you don't have to start with sticking out you can start anywhere <laughs> because we'll be squaring them up afterwards okay and just go slowly uh, I kind of went through the details of um, sewing with curves in my other tutorial about a big wonky drunkard's path, so I will link it in the description below. But the key thing is just go slowly. Also, don't pull the fabric because it's all on the bias. You just want to let fabric uh, kind of flow itself. And then you just kind of move it around, the one at the bottom to the left, the part at the top to the right, so they kind of giving you that edge you can kind of, where they're meeting up so you can sew it together because the curve we've done is very very gentle you will be able to easily kind of follow it Now just chain piece uh, the second part of the block. Okay, let's come back to the first one. Now you may find a preference which piece you want to have on top, whether it's going to be the kind of bowing in or bowing out piece to go on top. For me, to be fair, I have not seen any difference, so uh, because I want those two tops matching here, so it's easier for me later to square up, I will now put this one on top of that curve here. But again, you may have a preference, so you do the way you like it. Okay, so the, the, the one type of the blocks is really ready now, the one with the yellow frame. However, the other type of the block need a little bit more cuts. So, so I got my block stitched and I made uh, both of the options to show you uh, how they look. Uh, that's one, but also uh, we need that for that kind of second type of the block. So first block wa was when I had my yellow on top and I curved the yellows out. So we've got that nice uh, yellow uh, border here and then when I sl swap the blocks this is what the second block uh, looks like. And the second option is when I had my red on top and I've got the red frame around and then this is what the bottom part looks like. Now before we go to the cutting part again I just want to quickly mention something about the seams. I always go what with you know what fabric wants because that's how we got the best flattest uh, blocks so in this block with the frame uh, when I was doing the uh, that uh, 
stitching and then uh, ironing this part you can see the seams are going to the inside that's how the fabric led me that's how I iron it but in the second part funny enough the, the the fabric wanted to go to the outside so that's how I did as well it doesn't matter you know those seams will not kind of match up anything so it's not relevant so just go with the flow go with what the fabric tells you and you're gonna have a nice flat block and I also did a little bit of again spray start just to kind of make it nice and rigid ready for the uh, squaring up. So the, the, this type of block is pretty much ready and we can square it up but uh, how big you want to square it up it depends uh, what you want to do. Because if you want to just to make a quilt uh, with this type of blocks you can square them up as big as you want and I'm pretty sure you can make at least 12 inch block from this one if you start from the 12 inch um, square like I did. If you started with small letter obviously you measure what you what you can cut out of it but if you want to mix it with the second type of the block we'll be making you're gonna have to go smaller and that's because we're gonna make another cut so this is that secondary block from each of the color combination and what I want to do is place them again on top of each other and I will be slicing them again uh, um, do I match them? not really as you can see those middle sections going the same direction uh, I, I, not that I'm matching but I just want to more or less really more or less center them and I was just looking whether I've got those edges somewhere even by it I don't so it doesn't matter just pop them in the middle more or less and then I will do another cutting I just want to make sure that when I get to the middle section here I'm you know further around but quite close but fair, you know far enough to allow for that uh, quarter seam allowance and again I'm going to be making a very nice gentle curve there we go and then I'll just swap those two pieces together and as you can see this one will need to be squared up smaller than the other two because we have that extra cut and this is what I was saying you could definitely go for making quilt two separate quilts use the other blocks in one uh, quilt use the this block in the second quilt but if you want to mix them up you're gonna have to do those blocks first square them up to the biggest possible whatever that's going to be for you and then square the other ones the same so let me quickly stitch those again same same method same way uh, and I will see what I can square them up to okay so I've stitched my blocks and this is what they look like so now obviously I need to square them up again depends how the curves were going the size will be bigger or smaller one thing you can do if you like to keep uh, perhaps this type of the block the biggest as possible and you still want to mix it up with this one which will be smaller is square it up to whatever blocks allow you and then just add a border around to bring it up to whatever size of the other block is so there are options there you can treat it as a totally different block put it on different quilt or put it on the back again another option I will carry on with my blocks I will make enough to kind of do a little bit of a show on the design board and we can see what options we have with those blocks to build a nice quilt I finished all my blocks and I will pop them on the design board to show you well few of the options you can build from blocks those blocks because there's like loads of combination you can do uh, but before I do that I just wanted to show you um, this block and a little bit about squaring it up so I did square it up to 11 inches to match it up with the other type of the block as mentioned it was difficult to match those corners here sometimes because it, you know it's a wonky block so don't don't strive to have them all equally here uh, you know when you're squaring it up when I was squaring them up I did put on my ruler uh, masking tape just to see it kind of uh, highlight where my 11 inches is and I also put a small masking tape in the middle so when I was uh, putting my ruler on the block here I could more or less in this corner target a middle section of that stripe but on this side as you can see it will not be exactly where that middle is so don't worry about it it is a wonky block and they look great together anyway
So I think this is what I would, what I would call an ultimate scrappy block. Uh, I've taken quite a few pictures already and, and you can enjoy the slideshow. Uh, but I haven't exhausted all the options with those blocks. Uh, there's plenty more layouts you can build from those using either one color combination with one type of block or even individual colors combination with uh, with the block. Uh, I am kind of blown away <laughs> by the amount of quilts I can make just from one simple block uh, or maybe one how I started simple. And uh, this is my third block with the curves and uh, I really enjoy the curves now I have to say it is it wasn't so um, complicated as scary as I thought so maybe because I'm not trying to be very perfect there it's all kind of you know free lines and you you just play with it as you like and that kind of something comes out uh, of it anyway uh, so it doesn't have to be uh, you know precise and kind of rigid you can just play with the fabric and play with the curves uh, the key thing is that uh, for me at least to make those curves quite gentle each time because that's how the fabric will lay uh, together nice uh, I might start experiment with a little bit more defined curves later on we'll see how it goes but for now I'm very happy and you know I just used a, a plain fabric here uh, to, to add the um, to, to the design now if you add the color fabrics stripy fabrics I don't know checkerboard fabrics that's just another batch of the blocks you can make out of those I you know if you tried it please be sure to share it on the Facebook group page because I really would like to see uh, the other combinations of those uh, blocks I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on floating coins I will probably put those blocks away for a little bit before I decide which block I uh, you know which layout I want to go with to make a quilt I might even make two we we'll see um, if you uh, want to see how I finish, please be sure to join me on either Instagram or Facebook group page. I will be posting it there. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comment sections below. Check the description for uh, links to other tutorials I've mentioned and other resources available to you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching and see you next time.